All right, we're live, and this is the sixth day of June, uh, a memorial to D-Day, and we just uh, uh, salute those who have gone before us. And, uh, and I saw a quote, you know, they were giving their today for our tomorrow, you know, and that's pretty cool. Um, it's humbling, you know, to think that people would do that for us, and they don't, didn't even know us, right? Um, well, today in the in the lather games, the theme is uh, duplicate day or dupe day. The soap needs to be uh, a, a copy. Hey, Mike, welcome, welcome. Um, the soap needs to be a copy of an existing fragrance that's out there. And uh, yeah, Mike, you, you have to say hi and then leave. <laughs> um, good morning, Peter. Welcome, welcome. And so uh, the good news about a, a, a scent that is an existing cologne is that so many soap makers are taking established, cherished colognes like, uh, you know, Aquadigio, Aventus, Green Irish Tweed. And some of these are classics, have been around for decades. Uh, Fahrenheit, Sauvage, um, some, some by Yves Saint Laurent. And, uh, and all these have been put by multiple vendors into soaps and aftershaves and that sort of thing. And so in, in that spirit, I could have chosen many. Uh, I've got a bunch of Sterling. I've got uh, Declaration Grooming did some. Uh, he's usually more in original sense, but he did do uh, one called Sellout, right? And, uh, and that's why he called it that. And uh, yeah, I know, Peter, it's, it's morning for you. Welcome to breakfast. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and so I, I do have uh, like Intrepid Man is origin, it's Creed Original Santal from Sterling. Executive Man is Aventus, of course. And, uh, you know, Oligari is Fahrenheit. Uh, Sterling has done a good many of them. Though, so it would have been a good day to pick Sterling. But I decided to do a little oddball one. This is one that I bought as a lot. And it is West of Olympia, and it's a clone of Polo Red. And it's a nice scent. West, and I just wanted to, we could take a moment to remember West of Olympia. They made some really good soaps and had very good soap bases. They were not able to carry on. Maybe it was two years ago they had to shut down. I can't quite remember. Uh, maybe three by now. And so this is my dupe today. And my other gear is as much as I can find a, a, of a dupe. Um, the uh, Zenith B23, he has some brothers, at least, the B29 and some others with different colors, handles and things like that. But, but mainly what I mean is this razor here is the gunmetal version of the 6C from Rockwell. And the 6C is the clone of the 6S. The C being a uh, Zamac razor that's plated and the uh, 6S being pure stainless steel. And so this is a much younger version. And had I known what I know um, right now, it's possible that I might have started out with the 6C right here and, uh, and used it for a while, gotten good technique, been able to play around with the settings uh, before I moved on to other things, that sort of thing. Because I definitely enjoy this razor more than the DE89s uh, and the, of the Jagger and Muley variety, uh, the different uh, heads that are all in that same family. Uh, so we will put the Nasset into this one. And where are we? Is this uh, 283, use number 283 of the Nasset? Little paper card. And let's see if you guys can can see the, see if I, if I bend it the right way. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, right there, in one, the etching I did in the past. It's a little hard to see unless the light is right. All right, let's put it in the razor. And to continue the dupes going, I have, <laughs> yes, Seth, hey, Seth. You landed on the card for your first quality. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, man. Uh, if I'd have landed on the card, I would have taken my time to. Uh, oh, man, I forgot to check the plating here. Ah, 
I'm going to have to shave on the five and just hope for the best. I would have rather had the a setting that was smaller for this, but hey, oh well, that's poor prep, right? I should have checked that to be sure. I just rarely ever use this guy. Um, so I've got, uh, as an aftershave, I've got what I talked about earlier, Intrepid Man, and this is the uh, original Santal from Sterling. And then uh, Aqua H2O is one made by some anonymous company, um, and it's Aqua Dijo is the uh, scent that it's designed to be a duplicate of. So uh, we tried to dupe as many things we could as in today's shave. Uh, but this, I've used this once before, this West of Olympia, and it's a wonderful performance and a nice uh, cologne type, uh, polo red type scent. Let's get some water. I've got to have my submission in by 2 a.m., and that's just in two hours. And lately, some of these videos have gone 45 minutes to an hour. So um, that doesn't give me long to, to put it together. I've got my 40 milliliters of water here to add to the soap as we go. Let's go ahead and load up. The brush here has been sitting in the water for 10 minutes or so. So it should be well hydrated. And this is the B23 from Sterling. It is one of the uh, from Zenith. And let's see, what are we going to do? 30 seconds? Why don't we do? Yeah, we'll start at the 40 mark. So we'll go to 10 on the next minute. This is a brush that, unlike the B2 and the B10 from Zenith, really gave me a hard time with backbone. It had a lot more backbone than either of those other two brushes, which have kind of some natural splay built into the knot. This one does not. It, it shoots out those bristles out of the handle parallel. Okay, so there's a 30 second load. We've got some nice little kind of early lather there. And, uh, and this is one that my friend Buzz had as well. He had a different color, so his number was slightly different than the B23. Um, but he assured me that once I put some uses on it, it would relax. And he was right. Thank you, Seth. Yeah, the guys who thought up these themes were really... Uh, Uh, they kept in mind the fun ones from past years, and they really thought up some good stuff. Now, the daily challenge today is to honor, I believe, uh, you are breaking things who, uh, I believe that's who mentioned, who uh, last time he did drawings of his soap labels. And he animated them, I believe. And so it's really neat to watch those come together. And he's such a great uh, illustrator that he, uh, it was fun to, to watch those happen. And, uh, and so now maybe he did that actually two lather games ago. And so then they brought it back as something for everyone to do last on a certain day, last lather games. And so now it's like they, they said that was so much fun to have people try. And let's, let's have people do it again. So that was today's challenge. Um, and I, I am going to try it. Um, with the time crunch, I'm going I'm to do my best uh, to see if I can fit something in. I, I, was gonna, I was thinking about doing it on the live video here, but I, I would rather, um, I didn't want to take the time to try to go find um, uh, some paper and a pen that you guys can see and that sort of thing. I did actually go to an art class in college. Um, I didn't really have, I didn't really uh, do the art thing in high school, but I went to an art appreciation class and the professor um, had us draw and he saw something in what I was doing. And he said, listen, I want you to take a, a real art class instead of this appreciation thing. And uh, I want you to take that. And so I did. And I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I explored that part of something I didn't. I mean, I'd always been a drawer. You know, I 
when I was really young, you know, you draw superheroes and tanks and planes and things like that when you're a guy. And I certainly did my share of that. Trying to echo the comic books and all that, you know. So it was fun to have a, a real art class. And so hopefully I'll do all right, but it'll be fun. What I'll probably do is this neat exercise that he actually gave us as an evaluation where you, you don't lift your pencil. You don't lift your pen up from the paper. And you just, and it's just to say, hey, just move. Just don't try to be perfect with it. Just uh, get that pen on the paper, work it around, and uh, and try to draw something of what you see, you know. And he was a really great art professor in, in, in another sense where he said, hey, um, don't try to recreate it perfectly. That's not what good art is all about. If you want that, just take a picture. Um, you know, you, you want to make people feel things. You want to, you know, have it do something. You you want it to be special in some way, not just realistic. And that, that was pretty cool to learn. So I will try that. And if I don't get it in by, by the 2 a.m. mark, I will, um, I may be over that, but I'll put it as an attachment as a, uh, like a reply to my post, um, my uh, SOTD post that I'll do on Reddit. Um, before I forget, we've got some, we had some bad news today. Over on Reddit, there's this awesome guy. Uh, his handle was 120 in a 55. And uh, his uh, actual name was Matt, and he actually passed away late last night. Um, and he, uh, speaking of art, man, he had a gift for photography. He would take um, wonderful photos of his gear and submit them with his shave of the day posts. It was just a thing of beauty to, to look at his, his uh, the, the pictures that he composed and put together. It was wonderful. He, uh, and while I did see my share of those, I really knew him more for um, for his wonderful scent descriptions and the write-ups and reviews that he would do for a, a certain soap scent or a cologne or something. And his descriptions were wonderful. They uh, they really put you in in a good place to understand what it was about. They were well researched. They were intelligent. I mean, he was a top-notch communicator in that sort of thing, and he was giving of his efforts to the community. His, his posts are, will be a wonderful record for people to doing research. Um, and uh, it, it's just tremendous. He, uh, it, that, that was going to, that's going to keep benefiting the community even after now that he's passed on. And, uh, and I didn't know him personally. I did interact with him a few times, but you know, it wasn't a, a thing where we knew each other personally, but uh, uh, we communicated some and he will be missed. He will be very much missed. All right, let me get my face wet again. Oh, now, Zesty Calico. It is fortuitous that you would make it to this live shave. And you are watching the Lather Games, and so I'll bet you will know why. Because today is Dupe Day, where we are doing duplicates of existing colognes. Mr. Calco has... Uh, been one to occasionally offer uh, decants. He'll buy a large bottle of a popular cologne like Green Irish Tweed or Original Santal or Fahrenheit or something like that. And then, and he'll of course pay huge amounts of money for it, but then he will break it up into little small tester containers, um, you know, five milliliters, 10 milliliters, uh, that sort of two milliliters, whatever, and uh, and then he'll sell it off. And it's a wonderful service to our community because for those of us who don't want to pay a ton of money for that, a big amount of it, that is a, it just costs, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like that, um, eight bucks, uh, depending on the quantity that you want. And you get to try a legit real perfume. Uh, a really uh, a pure fragrance there instead of relying on the dupes. And so if you get, um, you know, Aventus for one, you may compare it with Executive Man from Sterling and then the actual Creed Aventus. And so it's uh, wonderful to have him here. 
<laughs> He's always wheeling and dealing. Slumber house. Sorry, I do not know what that is. Is that a cologne? I am not really up on the cologne market. Oh, are you talking to Zesty Calco? Yeah. Talk to him. Maybe you're talking to him. So this brush still has tons of backbone. The From the handle to about halfway up the knot, we're talking about a strong backbone. Then it starts to relax. The tips no longer have prickle. They're very relaxed. And so that last bit is really where the comfort lies at this point. It will continue to expand and grow. And so I think that's why this might be a really enjoyable brush in one or 200 uses. And when I say really enjoyable, I mean really enjoyable. Right now, I do enjoy it. And so at least while I'm waiting for it to kind of grow and mature, I'm still getting enjoyable shaves. Unlike some other boards where you really have to wait a long time before you or deploy, deploy some kind of shortcut method. All right, we've worked it into my skin. All right. Lather feels very good. It feels uh, creamy on my face. If you really have a, a soap that you really want to dig into, get a high backbone bore like this and you, it just really pulls up that soap. If you just sometimes you feel like messing up a soap, you know, sometimes you don't feel like being dainty and just gathering up enough. Sometimes you really feel like grinding on one and a nice bore like this is a, a great way to go. All right. How much water have we started out with? We are looking at about 26, 27 milliliters so far. Okay. All right. We went with a level five here. I had the five, six plate on here and uh, with the Rockwell series, sometimes it's a little confusing, but when you assemble the razor, the number that you can see, that's what it is. And so you actually put the blade on the six side, but the one you can see the five often when it, everything is assembled, that is the setting you're using. And I think that's a smart way to go. It's, once you explain it, it's easy to get that. Ah, oh, Peter, in another Zoom meeting, you'll have to replay on that one, my friend. All right, let's try this out. See if I need to maybe ride the cap. We'll see. Did a little bit of tugging, not really too bad. Seems like it's cutting well. I do believe that both sides of my face have a different grain pattern or a hair angle or something because they do feel different. And in that sense, I don't really believe that I would be very good at doing one of those razor comparisons where you shave one side of your face with one razor and the other side with another razor because my face just feels different. All right. Pretty comfortable. Man, sometimes it feels like some hair is really being taken off and then you feel it during the rinse and you, you realize you were wrong. We'll do a cross grain now and see if that gets it a little better. <laughs> Seth, <laughs> well, hey, you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, this lather looks like I hit it just right. It's a nice, creamy feel to it. I had a good razor movement. All right. Of course, your razor feel on that first pass is like a lawnmower bush hog kind of situation. It's 
there's a lot of stuff to get through. Yeah, Seth, I've got some throwback videos. I've released one of them. It takes me a while to kind of review them and see if it's got content that I feel like would help people. Um, I got some that I re recorded but never published. And it is funny to go back and watch some of your old technique. But you got to start somewhere. And the thing is, I think... Uh, as long as you don't try to give people advice when you're just starting out, and I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to me back when I tried to give too much advice out. Like I knew something in the beginning and I didn't, you know, I was so new that I didn't know what I didn't know. And so then what you end up with is a bunch of videos where you're kind of having to retract your information, that sort of thing. But yeah, man, please send me a link on Reddit. Oh. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, I think you are talking to me. Very good. Yeah, man. I'd love to see it. Very cool. Ah, uh, okay. A review on Fragranica. All right. Oh, okay. Maybe that's what you guys do. Hey, maybe I'm jumping in and <laughs> maybe I'm reading everything out of context. Sorry. Okay, rinse. Okay, so with that cross grain, I definitely did start reducing the stubble. You know, I could tell definitely this time that I, I got some down. So we'll do that again. This lather feels really nice. Um, right before he shut everything down, he did a series of the seven deadly sins and I, uh, west of Olympia, and I really wish I could have gotten one of those. They're still around. Um, I don't know which. Uh, I, I could have gotten Envy, but I think I read up on the, the write-up, and I don't think it looked like something I'd be interested in, but maybe one of the others might might be. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Glad I understood stuff. All right, cross grain again. So this setting number five is actually working okay. Because it's a smoothed out blade. If it were a new blade, I would have to be trading a little more carefully for sure. I like to stay in range uh, two for super comfortable and smooth, or three if I wanted just a little bit more efficiency in terms of the Rockwell settings. It is a smoother razor than I remember, but the the carve definitely replaced it for me, and I sold the Rockwell pretty soon after. My uh, my 6S that I had sold it pretty pretty soon after getting the carve, and I haven't regretted it. Uh, it just kind of, for me, for my purposes, it beats the Rockwell out um, in just about every category. But there are definitely people who have tried both and like the Rockwell. So it's a, again, it's a subjective thing. Rinse. For me, something notable was that the uh, the carve was prettier. The Rockwell is kind of industrial looking. And I found a much greater range of plates to where I could really customize the feel. Um, with the Rockwell, it was just the two and the three is what I chose from. But with a carve, I could go down to double A and then enjoy A, B, C, and D. Um, and then, of course, you had the open combs as well. So 
carve is just a wonderful way to go. But the Rockwell has a good part of the market, and that is okay. Um, it's, a, it's a nice piece. So this is the, uh, is this the fourth pass now? Did I just do two cross grain passes? I can't remember. In the beginning, I did not like a bunch of the lather ending up on my shirt. I mind it less and less these days. Especially in this case, this, is, this lather is perfect. At least in terms of how I like it. It's just creamy, very, very slick, and also very hydrated. I think the efficiency here of the five has caused me to reopen my little guy right here, but maybe not. All right, let's take a different stroke on here and do cross grain from the other direction. Oh, yes. Oh, now that's a pretty close shave. That feels good. So that works. It just took the cross grain to really make some, some headway. Hey, if you really love your lather, if you really love your brush, and the feel of the brush on your face, then why not take a blade to uh, to such long lengths so that you have to take more passes to get it done right? You know, you could do that. Oh, man, your flexi came in. Oh, no, your base plate is crooked. Dang it. I actually uh, should have one on the way as well. Um, and maybe I got in on the same shipment that you did. Uh, if you just got yours in, it may be a uh, fifth generation, I think, is what mine is. Um, and if you got yours in, then maybe mine is not far behind. Uh, I hope my base plate is a little bit better, um, is in good shape. Um, I did read that the first one wasn't well regarded. Uh, it got crooked if you took the settings to a high level. Uh, but if you were stayed mild, then even that first version was, was nice. So we'll just see what happens. Uh, fifth, I believe is the one that, uh, um, that I'm on. Um, I think they shipped it, you know, two or three weeks ago is, is my guess. See, yeah, John uh, is like some of the folks out there who just do two shaves. And I definitely have some razors like that where they're very aggressive and I wouldn't want to go more than two. And so some people enjoy that part of shaving and just getting it done quickly and, and getting it done closely. And there's no problem enjoying all kinds of shaves. Ah, yes, sir. We'll have to compare the serial numbers. We might have neighbors, little buddies. Although if yours has problems, maybe I want that number to differ <laughs> greatly. I don't know. Um, okay, so uh, we've got some nice residual slickness here. My face hasn't dried out, but I guess I don't really need to do a review to help you guys to know whether to buy the soap or not, since it is a discontinued uh, soap. So this is Polo Red. It's a clone meant for you late joiners. Um, it's Dupe Day, where we use a soap that was made by a company inspired by an existing established popular uh, cologne and this one um, polo red was the inspiration and west of olympia did a clone of the polo red all right let us yep let's do my against the grain stroke right there and uh yeah uh, looks like 30 second load was perfect i've got some margin lather here Oh, what a great lather. 
All right, against the grain. Let's see how it goes. Well, it's tuggy, but hopefully it's not the kind of tuggy that is going to irritate me after the shave is done. All right. Sometimes I wish I did have a mirror that was really close. And so at the end, when you've got a little few, few patchy places, you could just kind of get at them and hit them until they're gone, you know? Well, there we go. Uh, an enjoyable brush, even now. And it'll be really fun because this one's going to change quite a bit as it ages. The knot, very straight up in the first 20 shaves, is already relaxing enough to where now that, like I was saying earlier, that top half, very friendly, very kind on the face. Bottom half, tree trunks, very sturdy. And so as that bottom half relaxes with more uses and more work, then it, it opens up even more. And those nice soft tips will start to split more. And so it's really, you're really going to see big changes between this one at five uses versus 200 uses is my belief. Extends from the wall. Okay. Must be a side conversation. Unless I'm forgetting something. I've heard their customer service is really good though, uh, Zesty Calco. Um, and so maybe swapping out one for the version five, uh, hopefully they won't give you a uh, any grief. It sounds like they're doing really well with customer service. Oh yes, Mirror, Roger that. Yeah, yeah, those Extendy ones. Um, someday when I uh, get my own place, um, uh, after all this mess is settling down, I, I do plan on doing something like that. I've had one of those before. It's really cool. All right. Um, feeling really good. Let's hit the intrepid man. The strength of this polo is not very strong. Uh, it's not intense. And so the intrepid man is just not going to have a problem now. Um, original Santal by Creed is what intrepid man was based on. And it is one of the few uh, that I've purchased. And I actually bought the, uh, no way. You know what I did? I bought the soap and then after I had the soap, somebody got online and offered the full trifecta, the cologne and the splash that I'm using now and the soap again. And I thought, you know what? This might be something I like. And so I, I went ahead and bought that at a nice uh, cost. But I did pull the trigger on the soap because I'm a, I'm a pushover for anything with Santal in the name, just in case that sandalwood is really a place where I like it well. It turns out this scent really starts off with a, a hard hitting, maybe citrus kind of punch to it, a sharpness to it that kind of reminds me of Baker Street. And while that is a classic, I don't really enjoy it for shaving. I don't really enjoy it for a, a long lasting cologne on me. I do like it as a soap bar, very refreshing and zesty, but not for any of those other things. However, this one does settle down while it does stay sharp in the beginning. It, it settles down into something really nice that has kind of a, a, a sandal wood and some other mixed notes in there uh, to something that I do like. So I haven't, because it does end up where I like it. I'm one, I'm waiting to see if I can tolerate that initial hit, you know, so we'll just play around and see. Zachary, welcome. Uh, okay, Roger that. Finished his head shave. Sometimes I wonder if I should do that. With my love for soap and brushes, maybe I've got enough soaps to where I can start head shaving without a problem, right? Okay. Okay. Zesty is thinking about returning his Pearl Flexi that he just got. It's an adjustable razor. It's made out of premium ingredients, premium materials from a company in India. It's getting some good reviews, but they're having some quality issues on some of the first versions. And it looks like maybe release number five, uh, the fifth version 
is, uh, in, at least with his, it might be having some issues too. Um, but reports are that their customer service is very good. Uh, okay, Roger that. Well, if it's crooked enough to see, then that's probably crooked enough to, to matter and warrant a return. Yes, that's right. Peter, I would have, uh, I'd be evaluating razors on a whole different rubric there uh, with the, uh, to make them uh, good for head shaving, right? That's right. Yeah, true, true, Peter. Um, the, uh, a lot of people use a different type of razor for head shaving than they do face shaving. And I, I can't, I used to shave my head with the normal razors, the cartridge razors. And, uh, and so I'm sure I would enjoy it a little bit better, but I didn't, I didn't like the maintenance of it, having to do it so often at the time. I've got a couple of molds and I was always cutting those guys up, you know, and, uh, oh, and with the carts, I would always clog them up. And that's not any fun, right? But don't have to worry about that now. That's actually the main reason I got into double-edged shaving and the reason I turned to the razor at Walmart uh, that was a double-edged razor because I was so tired. I didn't enjoy shaving. So I did it every couple of days and those multi-blade carts would clog up like my first or second stroke. And I was spending the whole time unclogging them. And I thought, well, surely this single edge razor is not going to clog that way. Well, the rest is history. Matter of fact, it corrected the problem because I started to enjoy shaving so much. I never let my beard grow very long. And so clogging was a moot point at that <laughs> by that way anyway. All right. Well, I'm enjoying the scent right now on this intrepid man. I might enjoy just keeping this guy around. Or you know what I can do? I can mix him with something a little bit stronger in sandalwood. And I, would, I bet it would be just right. And it's also kind of peppy and zesty. So uh, it might be one that other people appreciate, you know. All right. So then, uh, as I talked about in the beginning, I have this Aquadijo clone, Aqua H2O, as the frag. Um, and let's, let's let this on my face kind of settle before we put that on. I usually been putting on my wrist uh, an update from yesterday uh, just right for a Tuesday was the Barrister Stern man cologne that I put on my wrists and I was evaluating it again. I didn't really like it the first time. And to be honest, this second time, I didn't really enjoy smelling that for most of the day. Um, it's a, it's an okay scent, but I just didn't really enjoy it. Um, it smelled like a, some vegetation, uh, and, and, you know, I mean, there are worse things to smell. Uh, it's just, there are some, there are some, uh, there's some foliage out there where if you cut it in half and you smell the stem, that's kind of what it smelled like and kind of a natural scent, but not really one I want around me all the time. Oh, okay. Zachary likes nassets for head shaves. Cool. And treat platinums. And he likes the, the success Rockwell for his head shaves. Right, Peter, I bet that's a good one. The uh, feather blade uh, that's been used once or twice, uh, used a few times and smoothed out just a hair in a, in a nice, uh, and I, you know, I consider the tech a medium aggression razor. I actually don't consider it a mild razor. So many people say that, but to me, it feels really more like a medium. Um, honestly, and I think that might be why it is such a good razor for millions of men is because it uh, just sits right in a happy place right in the middle. I mean, maybe on a scale of one to 10, maybe it's like a four in aggression. Maybe it's not a five or a six, you know, right in the middle, but maybe it's a four, maybe a 3.5, but I consider it kind of closer to medium than I do mild myself. All right. Well, we do have probably two or three passes of lather left. So I think I hit it just right. Lather was very stable. Um, the slickness was tremendous here. A little bit of cushion, not a lot of resistance as I squish it. A, a, a milky sort of slickness. Oh, 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 okay. We've got a double layer slickness here, it seems. There's a milkiness that kind of gives you that uh, viscosity. But then as you push past that initial fuzzy milkiness, you get to a light layer of maybe an, an, a light oily kind of slickness that actually is doing the heavy lifting and the protection and that giving you that excellent glide. So 
That's a nice soap base. That's a very workable, uh, very enjoyable lather. Maybe, I can't remember why he had to quit. Maybe just uh, he had to focus on other parts of his life. Or, I mean, sometimes these smaller soap businesses, it just takes money to keep them going, you know, and, and the soap market right now is just saturated. Yeah, for me, the C is right at medium. Agree with you there. But you know what? To me, it's medium in aggression, but it's more on the medium mild side in terms of feel because the car holds that blade so tightly that you get a nice, smooth, consistent feel. At least I do. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Feathers on lower settings like that. I That's something I enjoy trying. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take apart my razor. I was, uh, I posted my 380th shave just on the Excalibur thread over on Badger and Blade. Uh, I didn't post uh, a lot of the write-up, just the equipment that I used and the fact that it was 380 uses. And a guy replied back and said that he gets Nassets into the mid 200s, but then that's about when he has to quit because of rust problems. I hadn't really heard too many people uh, make that kind of statement as I'm putting my blade over here on my washcloth about the, uh, the Nassets at such an age. And it makes me very glad that I am uh, consistently packing very gently the blade dry after each shave. But the first month where I used it in austere August of 2018, I did not. I kept it in the razor. I just rinsed it out well, shook it, loosened up the head to allow for airflow and put it safely away from children. And so it did actually sit with moisture on that edge, theoretically, for the first month. But maybe that's not enough to, to cause any problems in the future. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, you know what? Maybe he wasn't dabbing it dry. Um, he, did, he didn't say... But maybe, yeah. Right. It could have been the environment, but I am in North Carolina and today especially it was humid. Now, I went to New Orleans in the 90s in October and it was blazing hot and ultra humid. So it definitely has the Carolinas beat in the humid department. That's for sure. All right. Uh, last chance for some questions. I'm going to clean up my gear while we do that. So great to have you guys. What's something that made me happy today? Oh, it would probably have to do with my kids. I got to spend time with them today. Uh, my boar brush, I'm uh, working it on the towel over here. This one has a weird way of, uh, of kind of sometimes staying pointed toward the center like that instead of opening up at first it definitely in the beginning it's a little better now it kind of looks like the the hairs are all pointed in a weird way but many of the other boars i have they all seem to point outwards and so they have a natural openness to them um something made me happy today let me think about that as i oh just yeah hanging around with my kids my little girl playing with her um, my little boy had a school assignment due today. Um, they also got a chance to play with some new neighbors and they had a great time, it seems. And so it's always good to see everybody getting along. You know, that makes parents happy. <laughs> uh, those optical lens cloths. Yeah, sure, Peter. That um, that makes sense. Um, I just have my washcloth and that way I can put my, I put my blade on it and then I put my, disassemble my razor, put it 
in separate parts and each part has a dry area to sit on. I got a text message. Let me look and just make sure it's not something urgent. I don't think so. All right. All right. Uh, ta -ta. So I don't believe I added any more water. So the uh, 27, 26 milliliters of water is what we use today for uh, the perfect, the perfect lather with this West of Olympia soap base that he had. And this soap was a part of a box that I purchased from uh, from a fellow shaver, and it included a lot of Mickey Lee soap works. And it was wonderful to just happen to get that because in the next month, I think, that's when they announced they were closing up shop. And so I was able to uh, get up a bunch of those, and they were used, but at least I have some of the tubs and so I could enjoy uh, trying out some of their soaps. And I've already in past, uh, like last year or something, I went through that box and used them all up like Luau and that sort of thing. I believe Luau is going to make an appearance um, in the Lather Games. It's a uh, wet shaving ex uh, sub exclusive soap. Um, one of the first ones. And I believe that might be the day where I use that one. All right. All right, I believe we're in uh, we're in good shape here. So we'll uh, we'll shut her on down. Thank you guys so much for joining. It's been it's been really nice hanging with you guys uh, in the evenings. Um, today was a late one, and so that's uh, more in line to help out Peter. And uh, but we've got some other guys who who had to go to sleep. Um, uh, Mike Rose had to check in, <laughs> and I think he had to uh, he had to split because he's got he got to be early uh, up early in the morning. Uh, so there we go. I will uh, try to do a drawing of a soap label and we'll try to publish that on the on Reddit. Um, all right, guys. Hey, take care. Have a good night. Thank you, Seth. Good talk with you. And uh, as always, I sure hope that something in this video is going to help you guys out. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves and it has been the 6th of June. Take care. Good night.